Bad news for anybody who wants a new AMD CPU, Gigabyte releases the Model S and Model X, and Dogecoin decides it's had enough being poor, it's gonna go kerchoo to the moon. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brad. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet quickly so that you can get back to your day. Let's jump into the idea that you might not be able to get a brand new Ryzen CPU if you're looking to upgrade from Ryzen 5000. Yes, my friends, we're talking about the next generation Raphael CPU which were anticipated to launch potentially late this year, early next year. But according to the latest rumor out there from known leakers is that the Zen 4 release will now be delayed until roughly October 2022, which puts it at nearly two years from the launch of Zen 3. This seems to just be an early indication, but this is the second source that has now said the exact same information that AMD is going to be pushing off releasing the next generation of their CPUs. There is also some potential thought that we might've gotten a mid-tier refresh of Zen 3, such as Zen 3 Plus, and that got canceled. So now we just have to wait for Zen 4, which it looks like it's going to have to be a longer wait for that. You can't expect a company to come out with 15 to 20% performance gains every single year. Can you? Well, maybe you can, but they're not going to do it. Okay. They, they, they need to take their time. Intel had to do this too. They needed to take a break from the performance crown for a while. And obviously this now brings into question, does this give Intel time to catch up? Will there potentially be the launch of Alder Lake and something else before AMD can release their next generation Zen 4 CPUs? We can already see that Rocket Lake is actually pretty good good in the single core performance, not really quite hitting that multi-core, but Intel and AMD are still neck and neck. Any time that AMD takes off here could potentially mean that Intel gains a foothold, gains time to figure out their whole production process and finally re-enter into the space and take back all of the crowns that AMD stole. Just like you go into Burger King and you ask them for a pile of crowns for a little project that you're putting on, then you go just whack each other with pool noodles while wearing crowns. It's a great game, okay, to play at parties facts. Is that the party you want to play? Let me know down below in the comments. How saddened are you by the prospect that AMD might be delaying Zen 4? I want to hear from you. And we heard you that you loved our sponsor Synergy. So here they are sponsoring today's episode of Hot News Synergy, the application that allows you to control multiple devices using a singular keyboard and mouse. And you do things on a computer that's halfway across the room while you're on the same Wi-Fi network and you don't even have to get up. You don't have to have a KVM switch. You don't even need to have multiple keyboards and mices. Because Synergy works effortlessly sharing your keyboard and mouse between devices, you can even copy paste. You don't need any special hardware, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Raspberry Pi, it'll work on all of them. Synergy has over a million users across the world using it to make their lives easier at home or at work. Programmers, designers, gamers, streamers, legacy software users are all common Synergy users. Anyone who uses two devices at one desk can benefit from this software. Main desktop plus laptop, easy combination to use Synergy. So check them out at the link in the video description. A single license for them costs $29 for lifetime use, $39 if you need SSL encryption. Big thanks again to Synergy for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. Now let's go ahead and talk about some more AMD news because it has actually disclosed that TSMC uses AMD to produce AMD. We use the stones to destroy the stones. A report coming out from AMD and TSMC saying that they use Epic chips because they're lots of cores and great at what they do and very secure and they don't have problems. So they use them and anything that's produced at TSMC, your Apple chips made by AMD. You're welcome. Staying on TSMC for a second, it's now been reported by Reuters that they're planning on building five additional fabrication facilities in Arizona by 2024. So six expected with only one formally announced. TSMC kind of confirming this by saying, yes, we did buy enough land to make six fabrication facilities, but we'll see how the first one goes. And then we'll talk about whether or not we're gonna expand sixfold over the course of a few years. And Oris has decided that they're gonna expand into just taking names from other products and saying, hey, yeah, that fits here. Gigabyte launches the Extreme Oris gaming desktops powered by AMD, Intel, and RTX 3080 graphics cards called the Model S and the Model X. No relation to the cars whatsoever. I mean, I'm heavily disappointed that this is not a crossover experience. I'm even more disappointed that the Model X system doesn't have Falcon Wing Gullwing doors. It, it, like, it should be... You missed opportunity here. 
Horus, all right, you should have partnered with them. You should have put an homage in here somewhere. I don't necessarily appreciate this, but let's keep talking about Tesla because you're probably not gonna appreciate. It's reported that during a hackathon, some people were able to hack into a Tesla remotely via a drone. It was part of the Pwn to Own hacking competition where they got prizes and a car for hacking the Tesla remotely from a drone. So the attack dubbed T-Bone involves exploitations of two vulnerabilities affecting Conman, which is an internet connection manager for embedded devices made by Intel. So once this hack took place, they had the ability to perform any task that a regular user could from the infotainment screen. However, that wasn't part of the driving the car. They were able to launch an attack via Wi-Fi to hack a parked car from a distance of roughly 300 feet. However, Tesla has already patched this vulnerability, but when the hackers actually brought this to Intel to say, hey, Conman is kind of flawed in this way, here's the vulnerability, Intel went, that's not our problem. Talk to the car manufacturers because Tesla is not the only car company that happens to use Conman for connectivity services. It's not yet known how widespread this could potentially be. Tesla has already patched it out, but there could potentially be more vulnerabilities on other car companies in the future using this exploit with a drone. We'll leave a link to the actual paper down below in the comments if you want the full details on that. And I need the full details on this. The Tesla Cybertruck Camper has already received $50 million in orders and it doesn't even exist yet. I mean, it's a really cool concept. You see, it pops out. It has a whole bathroom, a bedroom, a kitchen. It's, I mean, it's a pretty neat design for a camper, but number one, the Cybertruck's not even out yet. And number two, this thing can't be out because they need the Cybertruck's final specifications in order to build it. So they can't start production until the Cybertrucks are actually rolling out unless they have some inside person at Tesla, which maybe they can afford to do that now that they have $50 million in pre-orders. Streamit is obviously not a unknown company, but this is just, that's a lot of money for something that's not real. Speaking of things that aren't real that cost a lot of money, let's talk about the GameStop Bitcoin update. Bitcoin, D just what are you doing with your life? Down 5%, 54,000. Awful, disgusting. Get out of here. Ethereum's the new king. Ethereum coming in at $3,500, setting another all time high today above $3,500. But that's not even the one we should be talking about. Let's talk about the best boy in the entire world, Dogecoin, hitting its all time high of 61 cents currently sitting at 57 cents but up 37 percent in 24 hours up thousands of percent since the beginning of the year but as is the case robin hood crashed when dogecoin was spiking which got people upset and robin hood apologized it wasn't didn't seem malicious that they took it down like they did with gamestop but gamestop doesn't even matter anymore down one percent during trading up one percent after hours gamestop you're just you're, you're no longer relevant to me. And we can also just quickly talk about Chia for a second because that is the crypto coin that could potentially cause the shortage of SSDs and hard drives in the near future, which is already happening over in the Asian markets. Chia launched on May 3rd for a low, low price of roughly $1,600. Currently it's sitting at $677, which does make it highly profitable for people to be able to pick up all of these high capacity drives to start mining for Chia. But you see here it launched at $1,600, peaked roughly below $2,000, and then has settled down in the $600 range. However, as mentioned, that is profitable, but the anticipated launch price for a single coin of Chia was supposed to be 20 bucks. So if that gives you any indication of where the crypto market is at this point. And where are you at this point? Do you wanna go somewhere else? Well, you can order up an Uber and maybe in the near future, it might be an electric vehicle made in partnership with Arrival and Uber, them designing an electric vehicle for the rideshare drivers, which just bears striking resemblance to a Model 3, both with the landscape touchscreen, lack of any sort of binnacle behind the steering wheel, and then also the scroll wheels on the actual steering wheel itself. However, as the company has noted, they're making a lot of changes that'll make it better for a rideshare vehicle, such as this driver's seat is ergonomically designed to ease the physical strain of sitting in a car for hours on end. The front passenger seat folds up to create more leg room, and there's a bench style seat in the rear, which makes it easier to get in and out of the vehicle. They're expecting to launch this sometime in 2023. Their goal is to bring the affordable cost of electric vehicles, since they have low or maintenance costs to the availability of rideshare so that they can lower their costs and make it more affordable for everybody all around. I actually have
I've been trying out some of this. I have a video upcoming with my Tesla and Uber, just been doing some ride share with that. And I've just, I mean, it just costs me money to charge and my tires, that's it. I don't have to pay for any sort of transmission fluid or worry about an oil leak. I just have to worry about my Tesla catching on fire or being hacked by a drone. It's great. Or being shot by a lightsaber. Disney revealing its real lightsaber, which I just want to talk for a second about this headline. It has real in quotes, but we should also have lightsaber in quotes because it's just a stick, right? Like it's not a real lights, like all of this should be in quotes. It's not real and it's not, a, it's actually real, but it's not a lightsaber. Let's just, but you can see here, it pops out like a real lightsaber as opposed to like those ones you had to like flack down. So it's gonna be part of Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. And there's some indication that it might actually go on sale so that you can buy one for yourself and then you smack it after it costs you $400 and you break it on a bedside table or over your little brother's head. And it's gonna be a bad time for everybody, both your wallet and the experience. But the most important thing that came out of Star Wars Day is that Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is now free on Stadia Pro, you're welcome. Now let's talk about another major conglomeration versus another major conglomeration. That's right, it's time for day two of Epic versus Apple. Let's get into it. There's some details coming out that Epic pushed Xbox to open up free multiplayer on Xbox side of things for Fortnite with Tim Sweeney, the CEO of Epic, saying to Phil Spencer, the CEO of Xbox, that essentially they want free multiplayer to launch on the day that they were gonna screw over Apple by doing this whole thing, especially since PlayStation already has free multiplayer for free to play games like Fortnite. Xbox should do the same. And Xbox was just like, listen, we're busy with other stuff and maybe, I mean, we like you, but we'll get around to it eventually. So just hold your horses on that. But then on Apple's side of things, turns out that Phil Schiller, the guy who's in charge of the App Store, brought up in 2011 that they could potentially lower the revenue cost of the App Store all the way back 10 years ago to maybe even 20%, essentially saying that the 70-30 split likely will not last forever. So they have to prepare for how and when they're gonna transition and to do it from a place of strength rather than weakness, like, in the courts fighting a mobile game maker for a kid's game. Strongest position Apple can be in at this point. Also, it was revealed that Epic Games has spent $11.6 million on free games in acquiring people to come over to their platform. This covers the games that were given away in December of 2018, all the way up until October of 2019. You see the cost of user acquisition didn't actually go up very much with the weekly free titles, and them saying that it acquired about 18.5 million new users via free game giveaways, and that 7% of them, over 1.3 million people, went on to make a purchase. But you can see here that Epic Game Store's total unique users, 18.5 million of them signed up because of a free game. Only 2.2 million of them started with a free game. And I'm gonna give you a free bit of information. You should watch this video. This man, this mad lad right here, built a mechanical keyboard into his MacBook. I'm not gonna spoil it for you. You should absolutely go watch that. You should also go watch the details of our DNA 3. The Navi 31 GPUs that we're expecting to come out are gonna be big, heavy hitters if the latest rumor is to be believed. 200% performance improvement. Check out yesterday's episode of Hot News right there, and I'll see you tomorrow, friends. Cheers.